In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you everything you need to know about the use state react hook. This video has chapters, so feel free to skip to any part which you like. So before we get started with learning how to use use state, we need to figure out why we actually need the hook. So over here, we have a basic react page, which has a value count being rendered out onto the page. And then we have a button. And when it's getting clicked, we wanted to increase the value of this variable over here and render it out again. Now, initially, you might think that you can just define the value on the top over here with let count is equal to zero and render that out. And then whenever the button gets clicked, we can call this function, which increases this value by one. And then this should increase the value and render out the updated value. But if we go over here and click on the click me button, it does not update the value. And that's because whenever we click on the button, this entire page gets re-rendered and it goes back to this line, which defines count as equal to zero. And it sets this value back to this. Even if it's being updated to one previously, it goes back here and updates it to zero again. So in cases like this, where you have some sort of variable which is being changed based on user input and you want to keep track of it, um, you have to use the use state hook provided to us by React. So now that we understand why we need it, let's try to figure out what the syntax of this hook is. So before we use it, we need to import it from React. So we go to the top and say import use state from React and save that. Let's go to the top of the component and let's try to use this hook. So we'll call it, so we'll say use state. And what you want to do is inside the parentheses over here, you want to pass in the initial value of whatever variable you have. So in this state, count was initially zero when it's defined. So we'll do the same thing. We'll pass in a zero into use state. And now what use state does is that it creates this variable and it, it returns an array of two elements. The first element is the variable which will be assigned this value. And then the second element is a function which we can use to update the value. So we'll say const and we'll use array destructuring. So we'll say const is equal to, and the first element, we'll define it as the variable. So we'll say count. And the second element is the function which we can use to set the value of this count variable, which is returned. So we'll say set count. And that's basically the syntax of use state. So let's delete this let count over here since we already have the stateful variable now. And let's just console.log out the count value. Save that. And then if we refresh and check the console, we see that the zero is rendered out over here. So we can see that use state is taking the zero value. It's creating a stateful variable and returning that to us, as well as a function which we can use to set whatever value we want. If we hadn't set this zero and had left it empty, which we can do, it would instead set the value of the count variable as undefined initially. So we can go ahead and remove this console.log and also let's update this handle click function to update the value. So we'll say, instead of saying count plus equal to one, we'll just say set count and set it to whatever the current value of count is and add one to that and save that. And now if you look at the function, it works as we expected. Now there are two things you need to keep in mind with this use state hook. Firstly, is that you can only use it inside functional components. So if you try to use it inside a class-based component, it will not work. And secondly, is that whenever you use use state, they should be at the top of the component and in the same order. So you can't have any use state calls inside an if else or a for loop. So if you had something like if count is equal to one and you created an another use state variable, like so we refresh that it seems okay now but if you cl click on click me you will get an error which says rendered more hooks than during the previous render and this is because react uses the order of the use state calls to keep track of the variables so if in any case the number of use state calls in a component changes or their order changes somehow react is not able to keep track of the variables and it renders out an error so keep in mind if you want to do something like this don't use an if else and just have them sequentially without any for loops or if else statements. Now, if we refresh this and click this, no error happens. The next thing we want to learn is how to properly set a new value for a variable based on a previous value. So if we delete this, and now whenever we click on this button, we want it to increase two times. So an easy way to do that is just to call the set count function just twice inside handle click and save it and refresh. And if we click on click me, we expect it to increase by two each time. 
but it's only increasing by one. And this is happening because the value inside this count variable only updates whenever the entire component re-renders. And the entire component will re-render only when both of these functions are done executing. And until that happens, both of these set count calls are getting the same value of count. So it's basically calling the same function twice with the same value. So instead of doing this, what we can do is we can call set count and you can actually get the previous value of this count variable. So we say previous count, create an arrow function, and we can just say previous count plus one. So what this is doing is, is that it's getting the value of the count previously, and then it's returning plus one to that. So if we save this, it should work as expected before. So just adding one each time. But now if we duplicate this call, and save it, we can see it adds two each time. And this works because instead of using the count variable over here, which doesn't get updated until the component re-renders, we're passing in a function. And in the backend, React takes care of getting the previous value, even if the component hasn't re-rendered. So if you want to set the value of a variable based on a previous value, make sure to use an arrow function similar to this. By the way, I'm making React tutorials like this all the time as well as React projects. So if you want to stay tuned and learn more about React, please do subscribe. So until now, we've been passing a simple constant of zero into the useState function and using that as the initial value. And one thing to note is that even though the useState function creates a variable only in the beginning of the component being created, this value inside zero is being called every time the component re-renders. And this gets problematic when instead of using a simple uh, constant such as zero, we pass in a function. So let's take a look at an example. I'll paste in some code where we have an array of objects and another function which basically goes through this array, sums up all the values inside it and returns that. And we also have a console.log inside which just tells us whenever this function is called. So instead of passing in zero into the use state, we'll say get sum and pass in the array which we have and we save that, we see that obviously this function gets called the first time the component is created over here, but we also see that it's being called every time we click on this button, which means every time the component re-renders. And it's okay for now because it's only an array with 10 elements, but if it was like a thousand elements or 10,000, it would greatly slow down our component. So a way to get around this function being called again and again is instead of directly calling it inside the use state, we pass in an arrow function which calls this value. If we go ahead and save that and refresh, and we click on this button, we see that it works as before, but it does not call that function again and again. And that's a great way to increase the performance of our component. Now, the last thing we want to take a look at is working with objects in use state. So over here, we have a page where we have two input fields, first name and last name, and the values inside this are being tracked inside the stateful variable called form. So form is an object which has first name and last name, and both of them are strings. And we're just rendering them out as the value of the first name field and the value of the last name field. And then for the on change of both of these input fields, we have handle first name change and handle last name change. Now, if we were going about it the same way as class based components, we would just call the set form function and pass in an object with the updated field for just first name if we're handling the first name change and just last name if we're handling the last name change. If we save this, refresh, and we log out the value of the form field, we'll see two things. Firstly, let's change the last name field, so just anything. And we'll see that this error gets rendered out over here, which says that a component is changing a controlled input to be uncontrolled. And secondly, we'll see that once we render out the object over here, it seems fine for now. But if we go ahead and update first name, it removes the last name field and only updates it with the first name field. And something you have to keep in mind is when using use state, when you call the set variable function over here, such as set form and pass in anything, it completely overwrites the present value. So instead of automatically merging it in as set state used to do in class-based components, you have to do it yourself. So instead of just passing in the object like this, you have to get in the current value of the form. So previous form, create an arrow function, and then wrap this with curly braces and return an object 
and then spread using the spread operator the current value of the form and go ahead and save this so what this is basically doing is that it's creating an entirely new object with all of the values of the previous form value as well as the updated value of first name and then we return that and we can do the same thing for the handle last name change save that and refresh and now if we add a last name and a first name we see that both of these values are getting updated without overwriting the other so that's about it for the use state react hook i hope you liked this tutorial and if you did please do subscribe like share and comment down below if you want me to cover any other react topics thanks for watching